American Psycho is one of the best rated movies of our time. Except there's one problem. What's good guys? We're trying something new today. I'm gonna talk about American Psycho, which is one of the best movies of our time, as I already said, and explain why it's an absolute attack on toxic masculinity, a concept that doesn't actually exist. So let's just jump straight into it. If you guys haven't seen the movie yet and don't want spoilers, just click off. I don't know if I'm gonna spoil it, but if I do say something that wouldn't leave you guys to figure out what happens in the movie and you haven't watched it yet, just go ahead and click off. If you've seen it already or don't care, keep watching. So basically American Psycho starts off with a guy named Patrick Bateman who's played by Christian Bale, one of my favorite actors of all time. And we basically see him going through this rigorous routine of you know, cleaning his face like a whole skincare routine, taking a nice shower and exfoliating himself, and then working out like very tough and doing a whole routine. And that's basically how the movie starts off. He's in a suit, he's speaking very eloquently, and everything seems great. And he maintains this kind of impression throughout a bulk of the movie. He's at Wall Street, banker, as we can assume, we don't ever figure out exactly what he is because most of the scenes of him in the office consist of him avoiding people and hiding in his office. So we never really figure out what he actually does, but we know that he's at a top tier uh, company in New York City. He's surrounded by wealth. He has a nice car, he has a nice beautiful apartment in the best building in Manhattan, I believe. And he has all this stuff going for him. Materially, he has all this wealth. He has these attributes that make him a desirable man. Except, as we see midway through the movie, there's one problem with him. He's a serial killer. Now, this is a twist that a lot of people probably weren't expecting going into the movie. And it kind of takes, you, takes the audience by surprise because... A guy who seems to be like the guy that most people aspire to be, that Wall Street banker who has all the money, he ends up being a murderer, like an actual murderer. He kills people for fun. And we see this first illustrated in the scene where he decides to murder a homeless person just on the basis that he doesn't find anything in common with him. And it was extremely messed up because he first promises to help the guy, he gives him money, and then he stabs him in cold blood. So that's when we first get a glimpse into the actual Patrick Bateman and what he really is. And then after this point, it progressively gets worse. He ends up killing one of his associates named Paul Allen, who's one of the top guys at his company, if not the very top guy. And the reason why he kills him is because of his, uh, his business card is better than, his, than Patrick's, or at least he perceives it to be. And he ends up killing him. He makes some alibi that he was with other people. He even goes to the guy's apartment, like records some voicemails on his phone in his voice and makes this elaborate cover up and then after that, he pretty much goes completely insane, kills, kills everyone in sight. We see him screwing prostitutes overall and just going on a sex binge, drinking all night, uh, doing coke. And basically the image of masculinity is shattered and replaced with these degenerate actions that pretty much the bottom of the barrel do. And this is basically the Hollywood agenda, and this is what they want you to believe, that the masculine man is no good, and that it should be scrapped for parts at all costs, and that it's not needed. Men should be scared of their masculinity. And, I mean, if you really think about it, it makes sense, right? 
If you eliminate all the warriors in society, who will be left to stand up against corruption, right? If if every man is hyper-feminized and hyper-sexualized, why would they ever get out and fight in a war, let's say, or stand up to whatever they find unjust, or overall just uh, have an ironclad will? How will they succeed if all they're thinking about is, oh, what if, what if I'm over masculine or hyper masculine or toxic toxically masculine or all these buzz phrases that have been coined by the creators of these movies and the Hollywood uh, generations alike and as a man becomes more hyper feminized and as a man is taught that he shouldn't love himself the way he is at all costs he begins indulging in these bad habits such as jerking off, watching, you know, adult content and all these other things that eating junk food, etc, etc. All the things that I pretty much funded this channel based on. And as as you indulge in this, it becomes harder and harder to stand up for yourself and eventually all the men are gonna have the masculinity suck out of them and you know. That'll be it. There'll be no more masculine men. So, we need to change this. We need to fight back against the Hollywood agenda that they've been pushing for years and years and years. And we need to retain our masculinity and not be toxic, obviously. What toxicity is a, is a different trait than masculinity. It's just like saying toxic femininity, except that's not a term. Why is that? How does that make sense that only a man can be too manly and toxically manly and have toxicity in the premise of being a man, but a woman can be as feminine as she wants? How does that make sense? Someone leave in the comments below if you have an answer. I'm actually curious. So, with this in mind, this should give many of us even more drive because the percentage of men who are still able to do the things that we are are getting lower and lower, you know. Men don't hit the gym anymore. Men don't do their push-ups. Men don't approach girls in person. Men hide behind their phones, go to Tinder and try and uh, attract a mate that way, the easy way. And I can't say I'm not totally scot-free in this discussion. I mean, I'm definitely guilty of some of the things that that uh, modern men do, but the thing is that I'm aware of it and I'm working to change it, which is obviously all we can do. With the circumstances that we're given, we need to figure out a way to undo the pressures that exist in society and fight back against them. And yeah, so as I said already, American Psycho is pretty much a commentary on toxic masculinity and it pretty much destroys the image of like the working man and that's exactly what they want so don't be part of that 99% be that 1% of men and if you implement habits and fight back against the system you will succeed it's as simple as that guys